Now, for a lot of you guys that have been doing this for a long time, spore selection might come very easy to you guys. But the fact of the matter is, every single day, there's new people coming into this community, getting into mycology, and just the basics of knowing what spores are, what your different options are, is very, very confusing. They're learning from the bottom up. So every single week I get tons of messages from guys like you that are watching this video saying, Willie, what's the difference between a syringe, a print, a swab, a LC, and which path should I go to get started? Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time on Willie's World, drop down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell off to the side so that way you guys know when I drop a new video. As always, welcome to the Trip Team family, TTF, that's what it's about. And as always, all my social media is right here. So if you guys want to start getting really in depth and start seeing step-by-step -step videos, right here, patreon.com slash willymichael is where you find my private library. There's a huge private library with step-by-step -step videos that you can't find anywhere else. So make sure you guys go check that out. I also want to thank you guys for all the love and support you guys show me. I mean, day in, day out, the love I get from you guys is absolutely amazing. You guys are the core of this community. You know, every time I talk to you guys, I get to hear from you guys. It really reaffirms the fact that this is a community and I love you guys. So coming up, we have two giveaways. So I'm going to be doing a giveaway on Instagram. And I'm also going to be doing one just for Patreon. So if you guys want to get in on that, make sure you go check out both of them outlets. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving away five mystery boxes on Instagram. And I'm going to be giving away five on Patreon. So recently I dropped the mystery boxes. A lot of you guys grabbed them. We sold out in two days. It was absolutely amazing. And we raised a lot of money for this year's Christmas benefit. So I want to thank every single one of you guys that grabbed one. But of course, I had to put some off to the side because I'm going to be giving some away to you guys. Last week, I didn't drop a new video. I was really, really sick. I don't know what happened. I was sick for about three to four days and then I just got over it. I was perfectly fine. You know, I went, I took a test. I came back negative. Everything was good, but I just came down sick and I'm really not sure exactly what it was. So I want to thank you guys for just bearing with me for not dropping a video last week. I really, really apologize. But this week, we're dropping a new one, so let's get right into it. So when you're first starting out in gourmet mushroom cultivation, mycology, whatever the case may be, the first thing you're going to have to look at is spores. First, let's talk about what spores are. So in layman's terms, you could pretty much look at spores as the seeds to mushrooms. Without spores, you can't grow mycelium which in turn can't produce fruits or fruit bodies, mushrooms themselves. So pretty much it's the mushroom seeds, even though it's completely different. We're just going to keep it at that because this is a basic, you know, ground zero video. Now, of course, you're going to see a lot of different options out there. You're going to see words thrown around like LCs, agar, syringes, prints, swabs. And what do you do when you first start out? What should you grab? What can you use? Well, if you're in the United States of America and anywhere else really, the most common thing you're going to see most people using is a syringe. This is a 10cc spore syringe. This is the most common and most cost effective thing that you could actually buy and start using right away. Now there's many different vendors out there and companies. Say you guys want to grow cordyceps or lion's mane or reishi or any type of mushroom you could probably find a spore syringe for that type of mushroom. So pretty much what it is, is it's a sterile solution with a bunch of spores in it. And then you could use that to inoculate grains or really whatever you guys want. Now, when you guys buy a spore syringe, typically it will come in a bag that will say exactly what it is. There'll usually be a quality control number or a batch number. And there'll also be a needle. So they'll always include a needle 
for every syringe that you actually purchase. The great thing about sports syringes is you can use them right away. Now we don't suggest that, we do suggest going to agar to make sure it's clean, that you have a viable sample before you actually go to grains. But if you guys wanted to use this for BRF cakes or something like that, you could use a spore syringe straight from the vendor to get yourself going. And that's why spore syringes are one of the number one choices for new people starting out. Now, another type of syringe that you guys will see out there is a liquid culture syringe. Now, when you guys get into gourmet mushrooms like lion's mane, oyster, or any of those mushrooms, you guys will start seeing liquid culture syringes. What's a liquid culture? Well, it's a live mycelium sample or a live culture inside the syringe. So there's no spores in here. Instead of having spores that need to germinate after inoculation, what you guys actually have is a live sample. So it just starts colonizing right away. Now this is gonna speed up your colonization time, sometimes cutting it down by a week or more. Now liquid culture syringes are very, very common when it comes to gourmet mushrooms. And the best part about it, if you get it from a reputable vendor, they've already done a lot of genetics work to put that good mycelium in there. So you guys are already getting something good to put to use. As you guys could see, inside the syringe, you just have mycelium. There's no black spores. So as you guys could see, this is a spore syringe and a liquid culture syringe side by side, and you guys could see the difference. The next most common thing you're gonna see when it comes to getting spores is a print. Now a print is a great option, but it's usually the most expensive option. And let me explain why. One spore print could make anywhere from five to 10 syringes depending on the size of the print. So generally, you're gonna pay a little bit more for a spore print, but it will go a lot further. Now, spore prints could come in all different sizes and colors. As you guys can see, here's two side by side. We have a black purple one, and then on the other side, we have a golden or rust colored one. This is completely normal depending on the mushroom, and if there's some type of mutation, the spores might be a different color. Now let's say you guys wanna cultivate a mushroom that grows a lot smaller. Of course, it's gonna give you a smaller print. So as you guys could see, I reached out to Inoculate the West and I said, hey, can you send me something that a buyer would expect to receive if they were ordering a mushroom that gives off a small print? So they sent me these right here. And as you guys could see, they're literally probably about a 10th of the size of the regular print. Now you didn't get ripped off, that's just what it is. So these mushrooms are a lot smaller than the other ones, so they give you a smaller print. Now what most people don't understand is it only takes two spores to stop germination, and inside one of these spore prints, there's millions and millions and millions of spores. Regardless, it's the little one or the big one, there's still millions of spores. So you're gonna get plenty of germination and colonization and it will do exactly what you need it to do. Now, with a spore print, you could take this and you can make a spore syringe or a couple spore syringes, but technically what you really wanna do is learn how to make agar and put it to agar first to make sure you have a clean, viable sample before you guys actually start using it to inoculate grains. So typically when you're first starting out, you're gonna wanna go the path of the syringe because it's already put together for you guys, ready to use. But once you guys really start getting into it and you wanna build a spore library, prints are definitely the way to go. Now, another option that's on the market that is less common but has become more and more available as more and more vendors come out to the market is spore swabs. Now, spore swabs are something that we typically use when we're just trying to collect a small sample so we can bring it back to the lab and use, or we just need a small sample to put to agar. Spore swabs generally are gonna be your cheapest option, so they usually come in sets of two, and you guys can get them for relatively cheap. Now, the only downside of spore swabs is you really don't have any other option but to put them to agar before you start using them. Now there is ways that you could use it to inoculate, you know, uh, liquid culture or to make a spore syringe from it, but it's not really recommended and there's a higher chance of contamination if you guys choose to go that path. So generally people with spore swabs put it to agar, they let the agar colonize, make sure it's all clean and healthy, 
and then they put it to grains. Spore swabs are gonna be a lot cheaper than prints and syringes, but there's a lot more work that goes into it before you can actually use it to put it to grains. Now, sometimes, depending on the type of mushroom that you guys wanna grow, spore swabs might be your only option. There's a lot of mushrooms that don't drop spores, so what a lot of vendors have to do is spore swab and sell the swabs. So sometimes that's your only option if you want a specific type of mushroom. Now some people say, oh, if a vendor sells spore swabs, it's just a money grab. They just That's not necessarily true. Sometimes that's the only route that you guys could go if you're trying to get a certain mushroom. Now, if there's a mushroom that produces heavy, dense spore prints or, you know, the vendor can make spore syringes and they're still selling swabs, there's really no need for it, but some vendors do it and some people are fine with it, so to each their own. Like I said, big shout out to ITW, Inoculate the West, for hooking me up with that sample so I could show you guys in real life what you guys could expect from a vendor if you're ordering some type of exotic mushroom. They're always gonna be a lot smaller than any other type of larger size mushroom. So the bigger the mushroom, the bigger the print. The smaller the mushroom, the smaller the print. Just keep that in mind. Now there's other options out there as well. So some vendors will sell fully colonized agar dishes. And in Europe, this is more common in Europe, you guys will see what's called the spore vial. So what it is, is it's a spore solution in a vial with a self-healing injection port where you just take your syringe, you go through the vial, you suck up what you need, and then the rest you could put in the fridge. Now, we really don't see that in Canada and the United States, but in Europe, it's a lot bigger. Them spore vials could be really expensive because sometimes they contain 50 to 100 cc's of spore solution, depending on the size, and depending on how much solution's in there, the more money you're gonna pay. But typically, in the States, Canada, you're generally only gonna see three options. You're gonna see syringes, prints, and swabs. So just to recap, syringes, you've got spore syringes, and you've got liquid culture syringes. Liquid culture syringes are gonna cut down your colonization time because it's a live mycelium sample that's actually in the syringe. A spore syringe has to germinate before colonization could start. Both of these you could use right away to inoculate grains or cakes or whatever you guys wanna inoculate but they both work good and relatively you're gonna see the same price for both. Next you have your print, which is a print of the mushroom cap dropping its spores. This is the best option, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna get a lot more out of it in the end. There's a little bit more work that needs to go into it, so you're gonna to have to make your syringes, or you're gonna to have to put it to agar, or you're gonna to have to put it to a liquid culture, whatever the case may be, but you're gonna stretch your money as far as you could by buying a print. Like I said, one nice dense print could make anywhere from five to 10 spore syringes. And the last option is swab. So what a swab is, is it's just a sterile, pretty much big Q-tip or cotton swab. And what they do is they swab the gills or they swab a print, and then they usually sell them in pairs. Now, when you guys buy a swab set or a swab, it will usually come in a hard container or a vial like this one right here, or it could come in a plastic bag. It really depends on the vendor. Now with spore swabs, really your only option is to go to some type of medium like agar because you really don't wanna be making spore syringes or knocking up liquid cultures with them. Even though you could, it's not really recommended. And then of course, like I said, in Europe, you guys will see spore vials more readily available. And that's a great option as well. It's very, very simple, but they're usually pricey. This comes in handy no matter what type of mushroom you guys want to grow. You know, if you're into mushroom cultivation, mycology, it really doesn't matter. For all mushrooms, you're going to see these options out there. You're also going to run into some other options like spawn plugs and stuff like that when it comes to shiitake and other types of mushrooms because you could actually have colonized plugs that you use to inoculate your logs or whatever you guys are growing on. It really comes down to the types of mushrooms that you guys wanna grow, but I thought that this would be a good video to give you guys really a quick run through of the basics when it comes to obtaining spores, because that's one of the things you guys are gonna need to know when you guys wanna get into this. If you don't have spores or a live mycelium sample, you guys can't start growing. So it's very important. 
There's a ton of great vendors out there for gourmet mushrooms and all other types of spores. Like I said, Inoculate the West, thank you brother for sending this over. You know, he was very, very kind to do so. And he also gave us a discount code for you guys. So if you guys want that discount code, it's a 15% discount code. It's over on Patreon. So make sure you guys go check it out. You could save yourself a good amount of money depending on what you guys want to buy. With all that said, thank you guys so much. Hopefully this helped you out on the process of purchasing spores, what different options are out there. And hopefully this will carry you forward and get you guys growing as soon as possible. With that said, I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.